Coach, this is a big game. Well, it really is. I think it's a chance for our football team to do something that only one other team here accomplished. And uh, against a quality football team, it ought to be a great game. If we go back a year when we travel down to Tampa, South Florida really was fired up for the game, and we struggled against them. Well, we, we did. I think part of that was uh, hopefully we didn't play as well as we could, but they've got an outstanding team. and. Uh, you know, they've made the statement that this is the biggest game today in the history of their program, and I'm sure we're going to get their best shot. Now, earlier in the year, they, they had uh, won, I think, six or so games, seven games in a row, then they lost a couple. What will they bring in here? What will we look for scheme-wise today? Well, offensively, they're balanced. Uh, you know, they can run and throw the ball. They have some great running backs. Uh, their quarterback has gotten better from a year ago. You know, he's had a year in the system. And defensively, they run very well. And, uh, you know, I think they're in the top ten in the country in scoring defense and uh, averaging 37 points a game. So they got a good football team. Should be a great game here in Statesboro. The Eagles versus the Bulls. Don't go away. We'll have a look at the first half highlights. But first, the Coca-Cola play of the day. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 98. A big game here at Paulson Stadium. The Eagles taking on the Bulls of South Florida. The Bulls won the toss. They defer to the second half. And, Coach, we get to start the game with the ball. And uh, it came out, uh, when we came out early, it looked like we were going to have a pretty nice time with the pitch working very well. Right. Uh, they started the game closing hard on Adrian and Greg on the option. And, uh, you know, we were able to hit some nice pitch plays and put together a, a good drive, uh, taking it down the field. On our first possession, we had good pitches. And as you mentioned, uh, they were crashing hard on Adrian. And that pretty much was the, the story of the whole game. Uh, they were really dedicated to taking the pullback. Right, they were going to try to take the uh, fullback and quarterback out, which was smart. And, uh, you know, we were uh, able to create some plays on the perimeter and uh, some big pitch plays. I think, uh, you know, as the game unwound, uh, we had about, we tried to, to, to figure it out a little bit. We had 122 yards out of the fullback and about 115 out of the quarterback and 110 out of the pitch. So, you know, we ended up being pretty balanced. On the first possession, we work in a nice pass to Corey Joyner, 18 yards to help get us down the field. When we get close, you put in your, your goal line package and you bring Vonselius in and you pound it in with Adrian. Right, and it was a little tougher than it has been to get it in there. We had a, a little keep play or a little uh, boot for Greg and uh, we missed the block on the corner and uh, you know, luckily they were offsides and uh, didn't hurt us. And, we were able to pound it in there on third down. With that touchdown, a 7 and nothing Georgia Southern. We kick off to USF. They have a penalty, which backs them up to start all the way at their five-yard line. And then we see pretty much their game plan. They're going to run the ball. Right. And, uh, you know, they ran it very successfully. Uh, uh, drove it down. And, uh, you know, our defense did a nice job when they got down there. We made a couple of plays, and they had to settle for a field goal, which was big. They had a couple of, uh, of long plays, a 33-yard uh, run by the tailback, and then they mixed in a 15-yard run, but just a lot of them, just two and three and four or five yards till they got down there. Right, and, uh, you know, they got a, a group of very good running backs, and, uh, you know, we missed a lot of tackles today, and uh, that was disappointing. But, uh, like I said, when they drove it down there, at least we uh, got them stopped and made them kick instead of giving them seven. The defense did come up with a big stand. That's three points, make it seven to three, Georgia Southern. We get the ball back, and we start off immediately with a penalty, and we've got first and 20 from uh, down close at the 10-yard line. Right, uh, two penalties. We got a penalty on the first down play and then another one before we could run uh, second down and put ourselves in a, in a big hole and, and couldn't come back from that. We can't move, so we're forced to punt. South Florida gets the ball back, and they're at midfield, and they drive right in. They throw one big pass for 22 yards, and then they're able to run it in on a draw for the touchdown. Right, uh, caught us in a blitz and uh, ran the draw inside, and, uh, you know, guys did speed, and he was able to take it and put it in the end zone. At that point, Georgia Southern is now trailing 10-7 to to South Florida. The Eagles come back. This is where we start to see you're going you're gonna to try to work Adrian a little more. He's still not having much room to run, but you're still going to the fullback some, and that softens it up. Right. Uh, well, we were trying to make sure that the linebackers weren't going to scrape out and hold them in there, and uh, then we tried to run a little bit of twirl option to him where we could get it pitched to him, and, and it makes it harder for them to take him out of the offense. And, uh, you know, did a nice job executing the offense, and driving it down the field to get, regain the lead. He had a big fourth down play, fourth and one, uh, where uh, Greg Hill took the sneak to get you a fresh set of downs uh, inside the uh, three-yard line. Right, uh, we tried to draw them offside, and they didn't jump. And, uh, you know, we wanted to run it behind Mark Williams on the sneak, and 
you know, we knocked him out of there just enough to get the first down. With the new series, we get the ball in. Adrian Peterson, a two-yard touchdown. Georgia Southern takes the lead back, now 14 to 10, with seven minutes to go in the second quarter. South Florida gets the ball back, and they're moving a little bit, but the defense came up and put a good stop on them. Right. Uh, you know, we get them stopped and uh, make them have to punt the ball, and uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's the time that uh, we made a very poor decision didn't get away from the ball when it was punt and it bounced into us and uh, you know we give them a chance to uh, take the ball over on about our 30 yard line. But even with that gift the defense is able to hold tough and force them to punt again. Georgia Southern gets the ball back with two minutes to go. At this point you're going to see your two minute offense and you start flying down the field. It kind of stalls out though. Well it was uh, in all honesty I was a little bit afraid to run the two minute offense because the way the game was going I didn't want to give them the ball back. I knew we could go into halftime with the lead and uh, I wanted to try to move the ball, but at the same time, use up all the time. And, uh, you know, we, we accomplished that. We didn't score, but at least we didn't have to give them the ball back. Greg Hill ends the half with a long Hail Mary pass, which is intercepted, but there's no time left on the clock. We go into the locker room with a lead of 14 to 10, and it's a tough game. It really is. It's, uh, you know, both sides were really moving the ball well. You didn't have very many possessions on offense, and you had to maximize what you had. But the Eagles do have the lead. Don't go away. We'll have the second half highlights coming up. But first, after this break, we're going to take a look back at the previous 10 games leading up to the big game today. When you're winning, the season seems to fly by. September 5th was not that long ago, but 10 games have come and gone, and the Eagles have 10 wins. So let's look back at the season so far. Well, the season opened up on September 5th with the Fighting Christians of Elon. The Eagles offense struggled early, but finally got in gear with the option working, and we were introduced to a new Eagle named Adrian Peterson. Eagles win 31-17. Next week, Jacksonville State came to town and jumped on GSU early. But thanks to good defense like Earthwind Moreland's two interceptions and the great running of Peterson, the Eagles route them 51 to 32. GSU opened their Southern Conference schedule when Wofford made the trip to the borough. Greg Hill hit the airways early. A 65-yard touchdown to Degra Parham got things started. Add on a 30-yard TD pass to Chris Johnson, and the Eagles improved to 3-0, 45-10. GSU goes on the road in the fourth week to face Chattanooga. And the Eagles were ready, getting out to a quick start thanks to Adrian's 47-yard TD jaunt and Corey Joyner's 80-yard TD reception. The Eagles' defense comes up big, and Southern wins 42-25. to The offense and defense both starred against the key debts of VMI. The offense used multiple big plays. The defense was the stingiest of the year as Southern rolled up big numbers in the impressive 63-7 win. Against Western Carolina, GSU got on the board quickly. Thanks to Hill's 52-yard touchdown jaunt, Greg added another score, but Western decided to take over at that point, and things got close. The Eagles put it away, though, with a long drive capped by another Greg Hill score. Eagles win 28-21. The game of the decade had number two-ranked Georgia Southern hosting number three-ranked Appalachian State. The Eagle defense set the tone early, shutting down the Mountaineers, and the offense had its usual strong outing. The Eagles get some revenge against App, winning 37-24. With the number one ranked Eagles invading the Citadel, the Bulldogs played like the better team early as the Eagles trailed 20-7 at the half. Then Adrian Peterson took over, scoring five second-half touchdowns. The Eagles explode for a 51-34 win. Back at home, the Bucks of East Tennessee State take an early lead on the Eagles, but that didn't last. Benny Cunningham got GSU on the board with a pretty run. Adrian added a 91-yard touchdown run as the Eagles keep on winning 47-26. In Greenville, the Eagles get a big first half thanks to Greg Hill and Adrian Peterson. The Eagle defense shut down the Paladins, and the Eagles cruise 45-17. Ten wins are nice, but will it be a perfect regular season? 30 more minutes of football will tell the tale, so stay tuned.
Because we was pretty mad about all the trash talking they was doing all the week. I mean, but as a respectable team and a team with a uh, little dignity, we came out and hushed our mouth and just played ball. We showed it between the lines and we came up big. Besides um, Appalachian State, I think they had the best offense that we faced. I mean, they are balanced attack. You don't know which one to really focus on, the run or the pass. As you know, they have some very good um, running backs that um, transferred to um, South Florida as well as receivers, and also the um, quarterback was a transfer. So we really had our work cut out for us today. Yes, we did. The game plan going in was to try to score more than they were, and we knew we had a really big part in that. And the overrated chance... We kind of like that trash talking stuff. It's, it's good to see how you react to it and react it pretty well. Well, I think we're getting closer and closer. Uh, we got a week off to prepare and, and heal up, and um, I think we'll get there. Welcome back, Georgia Southern taking on the Bulls of South Florida. We come out of the locker room with the lead, but we have to give the ball back to South Florida to start the half. What did you tell the troops at halftime? Well, we wanted to try to establish the momentum, you know, kick it off and uh, hold them. And, uh, you know, true to form, we go out and kick it out of bounds. And uh, they take it over on our 35 and, and drive it right down the field and punch it in the end zone on us. The Bulls are able to move down. They mix in the run. They do hit a 27-yard pass to get them down the field. But then they have some big runs, a pass close in, and they run it in for the touchdown. At this point, they've got the lead back 17-14. to Right, and, uh, you know, have really kind of taken the momentum back a little bit. Georgia Southern gets the ball back, and that momentum uh, was obviously not with the Eagles because we weren't able to get much going. And you had a fourth and three at midfield, basically, and uh, Greg decided to keep instead of pitch, and it stalled right. out. Uh, all day I thought that the offense executed pretty well for the most part, and uh, the way the game was going, I, I didn't want to give them the ball back with them up a score, and so I uh, decided to go for it on fourth down, and we thought we had a play, and, you know, uh, we didn't execute it very well, didn't get it pitched, and they stopped us. And uh, could have been a huge turning point in the game, but uh, to our guys' credit, the defense went out and, and stopped them, and they didn't get anything out of it. Definitely hats off to the defense because South Florida was able to take the ball over at the Georgia Southern 47, but the defense was able to hold them a three and out and force them to punt. Right, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, that may have been the only time all day that we three and outed them and uh, couldn't have come at a better time. Georgia Southern gets the ball back. We do start to move. The first one, a big play, a pitch to Corey, gets you moving 17 yards down the field. Right. Uh, we got in a little different formation, lined up in some trips, and they were kicking kind of heavy to it, and uh, we were able to exploit it for a little bit. At this point, Adrian now is getting some, run to, uh, some room to run. He had an eight-yard run to help out, then three yards. Greg kept it a bunch today as well. He had some good hard runs. Well, he really did. I thought that, uh, you know, Greg played uh, his typical game. He uh, Executed very well. I think uh, during the game he might have missed maybe two reads the whole day that I can think of. And uh, he's a big part of making us go. And when he plays well, uh, you know, we have a chance to be successful. And Greg Hill kept the ball from the six-yard line in the end zone for the touchdown with the extra point. It's 21 to 17. Georgia Southern leading now late in the third quarter. USF gets the ball back and they're able to move the ball a little bit, but the defense is for ultimately forces them to punt. Right, and that was probably the biggest possession in the game because. Uh, and enabled us to go up by two scores. And, uh, you know, we held them and got the ball back, and the offense put together a great drive and uh, took it down and got it in the end zone, and we were able to go up two scores and give us a little breathing room. A big drive started with Greg Hill hitting for 13 yards on the run. Adrian adds seven yards. We're able to move down the field, and finally Adrian's able to break out a 30-yard run to give you some room, and then we get down close, and Greg Hill once again keeps the touchdown. Right, so once again we got into trips formation, and, uh, and they were a little bit short away from the trips, and we were able to run, uh, you know, our little speed option and, and score. At this point, you feel pretty good with a 28 to 17 lead with 8:42 left in the game, but they come right back. The Bulls run it. They get a big run down 55 yards, which gets them close, and they move it right into the touchdown. Right, didn't take them long to answer. Uh, they hit the big run on us, and uh, you know, got it down and uh, put it in the end zone. And uh, our defense came up with a big play on the two-point play, which, which really force them to have to score a touchdown if, if they got the ball back. Georgia Southern gets the ball back, and it's not uh, a foregone conclusion they're going to be able to drive the clock out. There's still a lot of time left, 627. We get the ball, we go three downs, a big third down play, third and 15, and Greg hits Corey for the big first down. Right, uh, we got behind, we missed the read uh, on first down, one of the, I think, maybe the only ones he missed on the fullback, and uh, we got behind, and uh, Greg and Corey uh, teamed up with uh, you know, it was the biggest play of the day, that without question, uh, to get us the first down and keep the clock rolling. 
The ball keeps moving. Adrian had some good runs. And then I saw a big play by Adrian, which was a third and one. It looks like he stopped just a hair shy, and he gives a little wiggle and is able to get the extra right. yard. Uh, great second effort. Uh, you know, the offense did a great job at the end of the game to go out and run off the, the last six minutes. And uh, some uh, individual effort. The offensive line got some good movement, and Greg did a nice job managing the clock. With about a minute left, though, it's nice to see when you're able to put in your victory formation and just run the clock out. Well, that was a great feeling. Uh, you know, we had a third down play, and we've been running Adrian in there, and we changed up the blocking a little bit to let Greg keep it on the perimeter. And once he made the first down, we knew it was over, and uh, you know, it was a great feeling. Uh, so happy for our players. Uh, they've worked so hard, and, and really, I think sometimes you don't understand how special it is to go through a regular season 11 and 0. I've been coaching for, uh, you know, 18 years. And uh, we did in high school one time when I was coaching, but uh, this is the first time for me in college and uh, something they'll remember the rest of their life. A great win for the Eagles 11 and 0. Don't go away. We'll recap this game and talk a little bit about what to expect maybe in the playoffs when we come back. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 98. The Eagles, big winners, 11-0. Only the second time in Georgia Southern football history that we've gone through the regular season undefeated. And, Coach, I mean, it's you know it's like we say it matter-of-factly, but this is huge. Well, it really is. And, and as I told our guys at halftime, once again, uh, you know, you have a chance to do something special. And 30 minutes left to go, let's leave it all on the field because you'll remember this the rest of your life. We don't know who we play in the playoffs. All we know is we have next Saturday off, an off week before the selection, which is next Sunday. Uh, what do you, any ideas of what to expect, maybe? I don't have any <laughs> idea. Uh, we'll see next Sunday when the, the seedings come out. And I feel reasonably sure that we're going to get to play the first one at home anyway, and I would hope that we'd be seated up there to where uh, if, if we can win, then, then we would have some home field advantage. But uh, it's a one-game season, and uh, we're looking forward to playing that first one, and we won't worry about anything until, uh, until that one's over. It's been a long season, 11 straight games, no off weeks. Now you have an off week before the playoffs. So what are you going to tell the players? What are they going uh, well, to get a chance to do? Well, we talked after the game. We're going to give them Monday and Tuesday off and, uh, and let them take a little break and uh, come back Wednesday and practice and try to clean up uh, what we need to clean up. and maybe take the weekend off if we do well in practice Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and, you know, get in Sunday, find out who we play, and go back to work. Okay, sounds great. Should be a great, great playoff run, we hope, in a couple of weeks, but we do have a week off. Thanks for joining us today, the Eagles' big winners. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Scott Pierce. We'll see you in two weeks. Georgia Southern Football 98. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rozier Ford Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. Bullock Memorial Hospital. The new vision for healthcare in Southeast Georgia. Bubba Burgers. You'll never bite a better burger than a Bubba.